Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this really colorful fluid animation using Mantaflow and a very simple material. To get started with this tutorial, I've already created a simple simulation. We have two inflow objects on each side of the domain. I animated the use flow checkbox so they turn off at frame 70. The initial velocity on both of them for the X is set to a value of 2 meters. Over in the domain, I have just the default settings already in place. If we play our simulation, here is the result that we get. You might notice that there is a very thin line of particles along the top. If we want the whole simulation to be filled up with particles, we need to scroll down to the liquid panel right here and turn up the narrow bandwidth. Higher results will result in more particles filling up the entire animation. A value of 10 works pretty good for this scenario. If you notice that your fluid seems to be gaining volume as it simulates, you might want to turn down the particle radius. I'm going to be setting mine to a value of 0.75, just so we don't get as much fluid into our scene. Once you are happy with your results, you can scroll down over to the cache settings, change the type over to modular, scroll back up, and then click on bake data. Our simulation has finished baking, now we need a object to be the particles. For the object, I'm just going to be using an icosphere. I'm going to set the subdivisions down to a value of 1 right here in this menu. Then I'm going to drag it over to the left, then select my domain. To actually add this in, we need to go over to the particle system tab and you will see two panels here. We need to open up both the render and the viewport panel. For the render as, I'm going to select object. And then for the incident object, select the icosphere. The size is a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring it down to a value of 0.02, and I think that looks pretty good. And one other thing that you're going to want to turn off is the show emitter for both the render and the viewport, so make sure those are both off. Now we can go into solid view and see the particles. Now it's on to the material. Select your icosphere and then give it a new material. Since this icosphere is representing all of the particles, if we change the material on this one, it will show up on every single particle. To actually get the colorful effect, we can press Shift A and add in an input and then a particle info node and place it here. This node only works in cycles, so make sure you go over to the render engine tab right here and switch the render engine over to cycles. And how this works is all we really need to do is take the velocity from our particle info and plug that into the base color of the principled shader. If we press Z and go into rendered view, we should see all of those colorful effects on our particles right there. Now this might look a little bit too dark and to change that we can add in another color, hue saturation, we'll place it right here. And if we set the value of this hue saturation all the way up to 25, there we go, we can see all of our colors now appear in our simulation. If you want to control the color a little bit more, you can add in a mix RGB node and place it right here and switch the mode from mix over to color. If we then set the bottom input to the color that you want, let's go with a nice blue color. There we can see it already working. Everything is now becoming that shade of blue. The factor controls how strong this is, so if I was to drag this all the way up to 1, everything will be that shade of blue. We will have darker colors and lighter colors throughout the simulation. If you want multiple colors, you can add in a color ramp and place it right here. You can take the color from the hue saturation, plug that into the factor, and then the color into the base color of the principled shader. Once you do this, you will see this is the effect, and then you can change the colors accordingly using the color ramp. One other thing that you can do with this particle info node is take the random and plugging that into the color ramp right here, and this will give you a really cool effect. Now every single particle on our fluid is a random color based on the color ramp that we select right here. And there we go, that is how you create a really colorful particle fluid simulation. I know this was a pretty quick tutorial, but I thought the result looks really cool and satisfying, so I wanted to share it. If you created your own simulation from this, make sure to tag me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. But that's going to do it. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you give a like and subscribe down below, and I will see you in the next one.